Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where we talk about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm gonna talk about the latest episode of The Enemy Within. A great episode. A lot of interesting things went down. Obviously, picking up where the previous episode left off, we have Erica telling Will obviously that Anna's the spy, and obviously he didn't want to believe it because once again, it's like if that's the case, it's like man, you literally set up a bomb that killed 14 people that you're claiming are your friends. You faked your own kidnapping. Being, hey, Nimick's death may not have been a suicide. And obviously, Will didn't want to believe her at first until he went to Anna herself. Obviously, you can tell she was a little off kilter. She was even trying to like play every time she'd mentioned Lane to try and like draw him back in. Even looked at her place. It's like there's nothing there personal, like the whole place was staged and everything. And I love it. It's like, and it's also because we kind of see what kind of person Anna was too, because the opening, it's like, oh yeah, she killed that woman because that woman was nosy. The last thing you want is her up in your business and stuff like that. But she's so easy. It's like, oh, you're, oh. Do you have anyone? Oh, you're just alone with like your animals. Okay, haha, <laughs> pow. It's like, jeez, dude. But I like that. I like kind of like that spy kind of subterfuge type of situation to like, because like Will ends up telling the entire team, it's like, yeah, I didn't believe Erica at first until I saw Anna trying to manipulate me, trying to reel me in and stuff like that. So I was like, we're not going to tell anybody because we're going to use Anna. She's going to be our inside ass. I was like, yo, I, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, I'm skipping around, but I thought it was going to be potentially longer. Like we'd have her like potentially being undercover, but it's got to be hard because everyone, you know, Jackie being like, yeah, uh, you know, the usual got to leave your phone in a lot. <laughs> It's like you could tell it's pissing him off. Even Danny kind of hints to it. Like they're playing these little games. Like even Will, when he was first talking to her, being like, I know what you've been doing, Erica. I mean, Anna. And she's just like, kind of little, so where he's like, first to come to work, last one to leave. It's just like, dude, I love mind games like that. It's so good. Because he knew like him saying that phrase would kind of get a rise out of her. So he just wanted to see how she'd react. But it's so good. But then it turns into this whole thing of like, you know, Danny ends up bringing the fact that, because for her, it's like, you know, because I think there was some revealing information when Danny was questioning her. It's like, the fact is, he's like, you handled the situation very calmly. Like, most people wouldn't handle trauma the way you've handled it. But you're kind of calm, cool, and collected. And she's like, well, I guess, you know, it happens when your family, you know, dies in front of you. And it's like, gee, when she was like five or whatever. But we kind of find out, I mean, later on down the road, it's like, Will wants to flip her. That's what this whole point is, which not everyone on the team uh Kate in particular is not too keen on the idea because like because the whole thing is she said because it's so interesting because she set up a meeting of like the whole like, oh like, yeah I tracked that Nimic stuff it go you know let's check this place out in Virginia and it's like it's obviously a trap and stuff like that because Kate was like don't go but for him it's like I think I can flip her because we you know Kate ends up finding out like Anna isn't just someone that was recruited recently or something like that or later years in life it's like no he adopted her when she was like five. The uncle she kept referring to, I'm wondering what she talking about tall. Like I, I associate, like the moment she brought up the uncle, like, oh yeah, that was there that kind of made her feel at home again. I was like, it had to be her. Which is also interesting because like there was a wife. It might have been who she was. She might have been talking about the people that raised her here in the U.S., but I thought she was mentioning Tall. She mentioned, like, a wife that passed away, so maybe that's what set Tall in motion, too, like, maybe losing someone that was important to her. But it was almost like a situation where, like, she just died because she was sick or something, maybe. Like I said, I associate that with her talking about Tall, but maybe I misinterpreted that, and really she was talking about, like, a, a legitimate uncle. Not, well, not necessarily her uncle, because she was, like, it wasn't, like, her actual uncle, just someone she called uncle. Cause we also learned some interesting things about uh, Will too. Apparently, he never knew his dad. His mom died when he was two. So him and Anna ha actually had a lot in common because it's like for him, it's like I bounced from foster home to foster home until I found Lane. Lane Lane's family welcoming him in like that. That's why like his father being like you were like a son to me probably hits him even harder because like that's the first family he's had in a very long time, like a place that he could call home. And you know, which is kind of like it adds this element to Keaton that you kind of weren't expecting. You're like, oh wow, that. That sucks, dude. That, um, but like, obviously, it's all some, but at the same time, you're like, or is that just him BSing? Like, the fact is, he said that he even brought Lane into it makes me think, no, like, he, he's not BSing because he knows, like, he's trying to use his own personal story to kind of make her sympathetic and make it easier to kind of make her more malleable. But it's kind of interesting because his story also ties into Erica's past a little bit because Erica had an asset that she, tried her best to get out which that whole situation was crazy like and managed i thought she they were surrounded and she took all three guys down like 
nothing. I guess I am assuming the gas tanks were in the back, the gas jugs were in the back, because it's like, oh, we're gonna burn some bodies. That's what I associate that with. It's like, oh, but I'd make you bury yourself, put some bullets in your head, and then just like burn the bodies, so no one can recognize them. That's the type of thing I got from that potentially. But it's like Erica's like, yes, I did it. The CIA just wanted her to pull out, just kind of forget about her asset. But it's like, no, no, I'm not gonna do it, you know. But it's like you're gonna be asking her to leave her country, leave everything that she's ever known and loved. But when it was all said and done, like, Erica got her out, but then later on, it's like, she didn't. They ended up finding her later, and, you know, some contract killers killed her. But then, like, Erica finally asked to do present day, being like, how did they find her? She had money and a passport. Like, how could they have just tracked her down like that? And it's because she, the guy she was spying on Erica for, she went back to him. Because it's a situation of... Because at, part of me was thinking, like, oh, at first I was like, oh, is it because she was pregnant or something? It's like, it's more so, like... The person you're spying on, there, it's and it's something that she ends up using, uh, giving will to use. It's the the fact is that when someone's sent there to kind of implant themselves into your lives like that, kind of spy on you, they leave themselves a little vulnerable too, you know. And it's kind of sad because in the end, you know, because Erica talked about the fact is the thing Tall didn't count on because obviously she was a perfect asset to use against Will trying to use the whole lane angle, but. You know, it also, he didn't recognize, like, how messed up, you know, Anna was, like, her loss, how much that affected her, meaning that Will could reach her. And he almost did, because, you know, it's like, you remind me of Lane, because Erica told him to kind of say that. And he's like, and they both end up saying, like, everything I said to you wasn't a lie. Like, there was some truth in all of it, you know, and... It's sad that things kind of played out the way it did. I mean, it's so interesting because it's like, it turns into this cat and mouse game of like, oh, she knows, she eventually figures it out because she saw the way he reacted when she's like, yeah, we'll get justice for Lane. And then as he's walking away, he couldn't help it. It's just an involuntary reaction. Like he has to keep himself calm, but he clenched his fist. And it's like, that reaction she told her all she needed to know. So she, she contacted Tall to let him know he knows, you know? And that ended with like, you know, because it kind of shows that even after all those years of him raising her, kind of indoctrinate, indoctrinating her into all of this, he still killed her. He knew, literally had her killed because, well, I'm sure it was like, hey, we could take out Will as well. But it's more so about the fact that it's had to take Anna. She was the main target because he can't have any, take the chance that maybe she got flipped and could be used against him. So... It shows you that, like, yeah, because Anna got adopted when she was, like, what, 10? Wasn't that the whole thing of, like, yeah, like, Tall's been in her life, her entire, most of her life. So it's, like, because, once again, that's what Kate was saying, like, that's why flipping an asset who's that indoctrinated, indoctrinated it's, like, it's hard. Because it's not, because it's not just about uh, money and power and stuff like that for her. Because this is what she believed in. Because for her, it's, like, this was her home. This was her family. So why would she turn against them? But... He did bring up a good point of like, why hasn't Tall kind of brought you out? I was like, yeah, he's sending that dude. But then I'm like, dude's there to kill her. So um, it, it's just kind of sad. She did, you know, give them information at the very end because I think what would, because, you know, because Danny was like, oh, you're sad. You don't feel like this is a win because she wasn't who you thought she was. It's like, no, because I think I could have flipped her. Because I think for him, it's like, if I, I could have flipped her, she could have been safe. Like, even if she was this person, like, I think he did feel sorry for her, like, knowing, like, it wasn't her fault. She was kind of raised into this thing. And when you're raised to believe something so wholeheartedly that you were willing, you know, to sacrifice and kill for it, you know, it speaks volumes. And I think for him, I think there was a part of him that didn't want to keep her safe. Like, you could make, but you could also make the argument, the darker side of things. That's me being optimistic. The pessimistic side of me could be like, yeah, that's just him looking at it like, I could have flipped her. I could have used her to get to tall. I don't want to think that. I want to think the more optimistic route of like, yeah, like things didn't have to play out this way. Like, because he saw that he reached her at the end because she lowered her gun, you know? So, but I thought it was kind of neat too at the end where you had uh, Kate coming over to talk to Will and she's like, I'm so sorry that I kind of questioned your way of doing things. She's like, I get very overprotective. And he's like, no, I get it. He's like, I need someone around me who will be honest with me. Obviously not all the time, but you see Kate coming like, uh, okay, See you later. And then, like, as he's walking away from the door, you see him smiling. So, how Kate's feeling, I think will kind of, like, that. it's the same thing on his department. Maybe. We'll, we'll see. But I think there's definitely something there that makes you go, they have a future. I think. 
we'll, we'll, we'll see how things end up playing out. I mean, it's probably going to be a complicated thing of like, yeah, I can't really be in a relationship because I doubt Will, like even after all this time, like Lane is still his main motivation. So, but I think we see him maybe taking steps to kind of open himself up more to other people and maybe something can happen there or maybe he'd be reluctant to just because they're also on the same team and that just feel weird in her uh, department relationships like that and stuff you know so what's interesting too is at the very end you have tall calling will and being like yo like I, you know kind of taunting him and being like oh you really think she's the only asset i have you know near you and stuff like that you know which is to say like hey there are plenty of people that are like low-key like you know out and about who are probably working for him maybe there are other people in the uh fbi but even the thing is like he told erica shagorn and then it's like erica seems like she knows what that is because that's what's so weird because it's almost like the show wants to make you think like erica might be the inside person or at the very least it was some like maybe it, that's what it made me kind of feel like at first but now seeing her think about it, it's probably more so like she does know what it is she just didn't tell will because it's something from her past that she doesn't want to share because it's interesting, too, because, like, I didn't talk about it. I should have talked about it earlier. It was, like, the whole Kate situation. Kate going to... It's like, you need to help out Will. It's like, Will needs to take risk, especially if he wants to find himself out of this situation. She's like, the fact is, Keaton's the only one that's making it so you get to see your daughter. So you better hope and pray that he makes it out of this alive. And I guess that's what kind of sparked the thought in Erica's head about her... Um, her ass's name, what was it? Shoddy? And that was the thing about Erica, like, what made her say what she did to... Um, Keaton was because, like, for her, it's like she's, you know, been, you know, had to recruit a lot of assets, you know, for the CIA. So that's how she was able to kind of see Cruz and knew exactly what to say to make her, you know, potential to, like, be swayed with all of this. So it's definitely going to be interesting to see where this all takes us. Like I said, the main threat within their group is taken care of, sadly. You kind of, like I said, you do kind of feel bad for her, but it's like, oh, the subterfuge is so good. I'm so interested to kind of see that going forward. I'm sure there's going to be a lot more moles, you know, kind of exposed and stuff like that. But obviously, Tall feels like he's no closer to being caught because it's like, yeah, I got time to call up Anna's phone and taunt you, which also proves to me, like, her phone's not that important. Like, it's not going to help crack his network. Maybe it is. Maybe if the right things are in play, but I feel like he, he him calling on it means, like, he doesn't care. It's like, I want you to hear my voice. I want to talk to you on this phone because I know this is the phone I can use to contact you. Um, so it's kind of like he he's not worried about it. It's like, oh, yeah, keep that phone in your possession. It's not going to do anything. It's not going to bring me down. It's not going to stop what I have already set in motion, you know? So it's definitely going to be interesting to see what the next episode has in store for us with all of this. But really, that's all I want to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, look like the force, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.